This is the mountain where in 2009 I had a tree pushed down right beside me while I was sleeping. I've explored all the mountaintops in this area, scouring them for signs of Sasquatch. Especially intriguing was this one, which forms a bowl at the top. It's absolutely a natural, secure hangout. I did find some structures, but they were nowhere near as thick and obvious and abundant as in the microforest beside the electrical substation back in Montpelier. To test this substation hypothesis, I found out that the nearest one to that was 14 miles away. So I drove on over there. between this station and another forest. It's a real easy dirt road crossing. Let's go see what we can see. Just a few feet in from the cut, we start to have some suspicious indications. This barkless tree limb here has been pinned in there. It's not from any of the surrounding portions because it's too thick and it's the only one that's been peeled of its bark. by this pretty extensively. That's over there and then right over here a whole bunch of barkless branches seemingly brought down in a sort of a thatch. Has this one been sawed by humans? No. Neither is this, nor this one going entirely different direction. So it's not just from one event that brought them all down. It seems to have been inserted in a kind of a crisscross or back and forth pattern. There's another. Another. In a different orientation from these. Very much not random, wouldn't you agree? This has been imported and it's upside down. See? Leaning in here, right next to this conglomeration right here. Lots of imports and additions. And then right over here. And notice, we can still hear the power plant the substation buzzing ominously in the background. I mean, if it fell, if this was the base sticking up into the sky from, from here, why didn't it fall away from the source with the top pointing away? Instead, it's across the base of the source tree Stripped of bark, unlike the source tree, and brought down in between this hook and down there 
with a whole bunch of others laid across it. Including this one, <laughs> wow, which is upside down and jammed into the ground there. Goodness sakes. These are upside down too. Never seen one quite as stout and thick and upside down. So close to the ground. Right next to the power source, the human power source. See, my idea is that they've been able through a particular path of evolution to make use of electromagnetic energy somehow. The Earth's own EMF sources. Ooh, there's a nice asterisk. For, you know, thousands and thousands of years. And then when we came along in the last 120 and began systematically harnessing electricity and electromagnetic forces, well then they started to have a far, far, vastly more concentrated availability of this power that they could tap into as well. So, if they use whatever force they seem to have, as reported countless hundreds of times by Sasquatch researchers and just regular people to disable and disorient and mess people up and probably use it to hunt prey as well. Why wouldn't they? And if they do that, why would it be infrasound as most people assume? Because they also routinely disable researchers electrical equipment. Infrasound doesn't do that. None of these sticks is sawed off. It's a whole bundle of branches, all of which are broken off. What's the point of that? We're not next to any trail. So, I mean, if it's ordinarily like a needle in a haystack finding signs of Sasquatch and Sasquatch themselves, then maybe if I'm right about this electricity concept, finding them might be like finding a needle up against a magnet, an electromagnet. Let me try to be a little clearer about this. I'm not saying that Sasquatch all go to electrical power substations. They're all over the place. And people find better structures than I find far, far from any sources of human electromagnetism. But what I'm finding, at least in my small local situation, is that a much greater concentration of signs of Sasquatch is in evidence close to electrical substations. So I think it may sometimes be the case that they congregate here or gravitate toward these sources. And however it is that they're able to take on and manipulate atmospheric electromagnetism, they have found that they profit by being near these human sources. Astonishingly, just this morning, I have been watching a new Colorado Bigfoot video. If you know him, you know that he finds gorgeous structures, large-scale structures and small. He goes out in the middle of nowhere, high, high up, eight, nine, ten thousand feet up. Well, today's offering includes something that seems to correlate with my idea that the Earth's electromagnetic field is known to them and is important to them. 
All right, so anyway, we're looking at the compass, and we just realized there's these uh, little passways of, rock, of rocks that come out and meet in the middle. I didn't notice that last time. And Nico pulled out his compass, smart guy, and uh, realized those are due south and north, north and south, which I find pretty interesting. With the X's, you see the structures behind? That's amazing that you did that. North and south. So First you, thing I looked at. So is it a compass? <laughs> it's a compass. That's amazing. I mean, you'd have to know where that was. I mean, it's so it's so hard to. Hmm. Interesting. The largest stones are north and south. Look at that. Another good eye. And look, and east and west. East and west. With the trail, each one. Oh yeah, look at that, Nico. That just made me really happy, actually. My favorite example of somebody encountering Sasquatch electricity, being zapped by it, as we say, comes from Florida researcher Mark Zasky. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Bigfoot Researcher's Journal. What you're about to see is um, something that's been described on many occasions, and um, I've never actually experienced myself anything like what we experienced on the night expedition that uh, is in the episode here. And I'm not saying it's anything one way or the other, but it did in fact happen. We got a big foot. Suddenly, his camera started acting up, and he felt like he had some type of electricity flowing through him. He got nauseous and panicked like he never felt before. Just like that, it was over. His camera started working right, but he was shook up. 